And what's the time frame and storyline for this sequel? Well, the um, the uh, the Wasteland Two takes place uh, 15 years after the first uh, game ended, and you know the, the basic premise is that the world was you know for the most part uh, destroyed in major numbers by uh, nuclear bombs, and there's sort of been one one part of society has regressed, while other parts have sort of through technology and sort of exponential growth become even more advanced than, than what it was. And so there's so there's these sort of conflicting pockets, but on, on, and within that is uh, there's a group of um, army engineers that had uh, taken out of prison and to escape the bombs falling, or and they kind of kicked all the prisoners out, took it over, and they set up the Desert Rangers. And their job is to bring law and order back to this sort of uncivilized world. And that's where you, as the players, uh, take control of a group of rangers going out there and dealing with uh, the host of issues that might sort of a, a cops on steroids in a post-apocalyptic strange world. Can you talk about the turn-based ga- uh, turn gameplay you'll have in the sequel? Well, the the uh, I think that for uh, deep role-playing games, it's sort of a given that you need to do turn-based because combat's the thing you do the most, and. Already, these, type, these types of games require a lot of reading and a lot of thinking, and so combat, to me, has to follow suit. And so with turn-based uh, combat, it has you worrying about things like distance, height, ammunition, inventory, skill systems, etc. So you're, you're always using your brain, and I think that's critical for a good role-playing game. And how customizable will the Desert Rangers be in this game? We're really hanging our hat on the customizable nature of the, the, the Rangers, and so that starts with character creation right off the bat. Uh, you know, some role-playing games have, have gone a different way. In fact, we did it with Bard, so where you you play a specific character, and then you get to hear his dialect, how he might say it. This is a little bit different. You are, we don't know whether you're creating a group of Russian women, you know, or what. You know, we, we so, so you you create it however you want. So it's completely customizable in terms of your your, your you know your skills and your attributes, and even the look of it, you can import um, uh, portraits that you want to have represent your group. So we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have a big focus on that. We even let you choose a pack of cigarettes you like to smoke. And what are your thoughts on PC gaming today in general? Well, <clears throat> okay, so on, on PC gaming in general, I think for years, you know, uh, it's been declared dead and going to go away. And, and strangely enough, here we are, and it appears to be sort of stronger than ever. You know, we, we, we and especially from a creative perspective. And again, I, I look back to crowdfunding. I look at the slate of titles that are coming out in the next year or two, and they are more innovative and creative than I have seen in a long time. And so that's got to make you feel pretty good about the PC. Uh, it shows you the. It shows you. You know, it's really an open system for the most part, much more so than console. And so there's always, it's always the same thing. You open up the system and you get more creativity. You know, you can't compete with the crowd. And so as as long as it continues to remain open, I think we're going to continue to see more innovation there than elsewhere. So do you see a future for Wasteland 2 for consoles and tablets and maybe Mac? Yeah. Well, we've already committed to doing a Mac version of Wasteland 2. That was one of the stretch goals. Uh, and a Linux version. So, so that, that you can count on. Um, <clears throat> we haven't committed to or really commented on it doing a tablet version, uh, mostly because we know we need to deliver a perfect PC Mac Linux experience. This is what the backers have given us the money for. That's what they're focused on. So that's what they want. That's what we're focused on. So that's where we are. It's not to say that it can't be done, but we just don't want to think about it right now. So what are your thoughts on uh, what tablets have opened up for gaming in general, like with your Bard's Tale? Right. Well, <clears throat> Bard's Tale was kind of a special experience for us, I can say. I mean, my generic answer is that I think that, that, that gaming on the go is going to be readily available. Everything. I mean, these things are getting more and more powerful. So um, anything that you play pretty much on PC or console, you'll probably be able to play on tablet. Uh, Bard's Tale was special. Uh, personally because we released it during a time where right when we released it Vivendi was getting out of the business uh, um, our, our, our European distributor went bankrupt uh, so it just sort of got dumped into the marketplace and and people were expecting uh, more of a straight sequel to Bard's Tale uh, so they were frustrated so I can understand that but it was such a, a nice little gem I was like God, it was so much fun and to do and the writing was great and, and it was sort of our poking fun at the RPG tropes because we were sort of tired of them and so 
now here it is eight years later basically and it's done huge it's done gangbusters and you know it's, it's like 4.8 out of five stars people love it so i jokingly refer to it as our wizard of oz if you remember that movie came out it didn't do so great and then years later it became this classic and 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 here's what's ironic because you know a lot of people you know please go back and do a more straightforward original bard still sequel which i understand them wanting that now i have another group saying no 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 do a sequel to the comedy so it's kind of funny <laughs>